So hello everyone, welcome back. I hope you're all doing really well. Today I have a pretty mammoth video to get through so I'm gonna try and not ramble as I am so inclined to do. But today we're gonna to talk about handbags. If you watched my last video, which was my big wardrobe switch over, I finally kind of really decluttered and organized and moved into my walk-in wardrobe, which has been a long time coming. Um, I'll link that up here if you haven't seen it yet and you wanna go and check that out first. So in my wardrobe, I have a space for handbags and I thought I could fit it in to that video, but I, th I think it's just its own subject in itself. So today, I am going to be going through my handbags. I'm going to talk a little bit about each one. I thought I'd make this into its own sort of thing. Um, so I'm going to speak to you about every single thing, kind of just go through my entire collection. But I'm also really going to keep in mind as I am doing this that I, I really want to streamline this down a little bit. This isn't going to be quite the ruthless uh, clear out and declutter as the last video was. But um, there are a couple I think I could part with and I feel like talking through them and talking to you guys about them will help me kind of see which one or which ones those actually are. So I have written down all my bags here. Um, I've got some information about sizing, colours and why I purchase them which I think will be interesting. And I'm gonna, I was kind of debating whether to do this in order, in brand, in size and I think I'm gonna do size. So I'm gonna start with the smallest bags and move up to the larger ones. Okay, that is out of the way, let's get started. So, bag number one, and I think this is in fact the smallest bag I own. Um, this is the Gucci Soho Disco Mini. Now the Soho Disco bags, which I think are quite popular, I feel like a lot of people wear them because they're quite a good staple everyday bag, um, a more square. This is the mini version, which you can't find anymore, you can't get hold of this. At the time I purchased it, it actually was no longer in production, so I bought this from Vestier secondhand, which uh, is the case for quite a few of my bags. I like to shop in Vestier, I like to give things a second life, and I also think you can find some great pieces there that are no longer available to buy. So this is one that I purchased from Vestier. Uh, it's in the ivory colour and it has gold hardware. It's actually got a big tassel and then a long chain strap. So this isn't a crossbody bag. I sometimes tuck the strap in and, and make it into a clutch. It's a very kind of grainy leather, so it's actually quite a good one for not bashing around, but you know, it, it's pretty durable um, and you can take it everywhere with you. And despite this being a light color, I've not got any marks on it whatsoever, um, which I think is just a testament to how strong the leather is. So this one I bought in 2017, early 2017. I feel like it's one I've had for a really long time, but I haven't, or maybe not so much at this current point, haven't used for a while. I think if I had done this in order of purchase, you would have seen how my style has sort of evolved and developed. And the type of bags that I've been purchasing more recently in the last couple of years are very much more reflective of my style now. I mean, this color palette is still 100% me, but I don't know if the actual style of it is, is quite tasselly, it's quite blingy almost with this chain. I know a chain is not blingy whatsoever, but um, sometimes metal hardware can feel that way. So although I, I love this one and it's so cute and small, probably not the best for carrying around your day to day. I don't think my phone fits in here, in fact it doesn't. And I have the large, the large one. Um, but for little bits, like for evenings out, it's kind of the perfect bag. I think if we apply the, have I worn this in the last six months or even the last year philosophy to this um, video, it hasn't really been worn. So I'm not sure I can justify keeping that one around. To me, bags, designer bags, they're there as a tool, you know, they're there to be used. I'm not super precious about them. I like to take them out. Um, I like to get my use and my money's worth out of them. So if I'm not doing that, I don't feel like it really serves a purpose in my wardrobe. I've never had a bag that I just want to keep um, and stare at and never ever use. So um, I feel like everything has to be very functional if it's going to deserve to be kept. So second smallest bag, this was actually my very first designer handbag purchase. I'm sure you guys will remember this. This is the Saleron camera bag. They were still Yves Saint Laurent when I bought this. I think I've had this one since about 2015, 2016. Um, and again, it is no longer available. 
Again, when I purchased this, I think it was no longer available. They just sold out. They reintroduced this as the blogger bag, which throwback, <laughs> brings back some memories. Um, I never had a blogger bag, but this one I just preferred because it has a more square finish to it. It's uh, kind of the perfect definition of a camera bag, which is usually a very structured zip top square rectangular bag. It has a really thin strap and this is what I love so much about this bag is how dainty and thin the strap is on it. It's adjustable but it is very long but that thinness of the strap makes me love it so much still. I think it's a very modern kind of touch. Um, I'm either into super chunky thick straps that make a statement or very thin barely there ones. So I mean it's just a timeless bag as so many Saint Laurent bags are. It's just sort of effortless and I don't think you can really beat it. This one is small, <laughs> again. I think I probably would be able to fit my phone in it and have done, and it's also great because it has these kind of like card holders. Can we see that in there? It has like a little card holder. So you sort of use it as a purse. It's kind of like a wallet on chain. You can just transfer everything over into this. So um, the Saint Laurent camera bag my first ever designer bag purchase and still one I love. So I'm glad that I made an investment there and it was for a good reason. And you know, five or six years later, it stood the test of time. I'm not sure the same can be said for this next bag. Um, so here we have the Prada bum bag. I know it has a different name to that and I could not find it. So uh, we're calling it the bum bag. I don't actually have the strap here with me. Um, I think it is tucked away somewhere. So I can't show you the full potential this has, but basically it comes with almost a belt that you tuck into these little hooks here at the back and you can wear it as a bum bag. Um, now this I actually bought, uh, I had it, I got it discounted. I think I bought it from TK Maxx. Um, DK Maxx are really a great place to find designer bags, current season and maybe past seasons at really reduced price. So I always kind of look on there and see what they have. Things come and go very quickly, but Sometimes you can get absolute bargains. Um, so I thought that was a great idea. Reduced price, very on trend at the time, the little bum bag strap bag was. I cannot say I have actually ever worn this as the bum bag as its full potential that it was supposed to be. I can see it in my head having like an oversized blazer with this tucked around or as a dress, um, just belting it together. There's so many potential ways to style it, but for me it just never felt right and I'm, I'm really not sure why. As an actual crossbody bag though, I, I definitely have had so much more wear out of it. So it has gold hardware, it has a gold chain and then also the gold Prada logo there at the top. It's another one in a great durable material, it's this crossed hatch leather and it really, I mean I have been out with this to pubs and bars and parties and things and it has never been damaged. It, it really is still in absolute perfect condition. So um, I think as a an evening bag, like a going out bag, it's absolutely perfect. Anything in this durable hard wearing leather is. But again, I think it is the chain strap. For me, I just don't know that it works for me anymore. I feel like if it had a leather strap, like the Saint Laurent camera bag, would absolutely love it. But it's just not one I reach for much anymore. Uh, I have had this since October 2018. In terms of wear over the year, it hasn't really matched up to what I hoped it would be. So slight regret there with that one, I think. More regrets here. Not necessarily regret, just a bag that uh, makes me very sad now. I've talked about the issues that I've had with this in previous handbag videos because it's still one I've, I've hung on to. Um, this is the Gucci Dionysus Across Body. So it's a mini small version of the, the big Dionysus. It's in a black suede and from far away it looks perfect. It looks like the most beautiful thing. But if I get up close here and try and show you what this looks like, the suede is just not, not in good condition. And this is my fault and I've explained this in the past, but I didn't protect it properly and I took it on a shoot where it was raining and I didn't have access to it because um, someone else was taking care of it. Nobody's full but my own and you know, it, it just got wet. I think this has definitely put me off buying suede bags. I don't think I have any other fully suede bags apart from this one. Um, I still love it so much. It's actually slightly different to most of my bags in that it has this silver gun metal hardware. It has the little Dionysus fly in there in the silver too. The detail on that is beautiful. 
the Dionysus range in general, which you'll see another one in a second, is my favourite thing that Gucci I think have ever done. The one thing I haven't actually done is try and fix this or get it sent away to be refreshed. Um, so that is something that will forever be on my to-do list. But as an evening bag in general, that one I, I love. I've just never really been able to use it properly because it got damaged quite early on in its life. So next is one of my favourite bags. This brings me so much joy, which makes me think that I, I can't really part with it because I just love this. Um, so this is the first, yes, the first into the introduction to my Chloe bags. I think it's been a long time since I last bought a Chloe bag, but for a while and still actually, they just spoke to me. I love them. So um, this isn't the first one I bought, but it's the first one I'm gonna show you because it's the smallest. So this is the Chloe Faye backpack. Uh, the mini backpack, they have a larger size. This one is the smaller. It is in the color gray and I bought this in April of 2019. So, wow, well, has it really only been a year since I had this bag? Definitely feels like longer than that. And I really have used this so much since then, which makes me glad because time per cost per wear, getting the most out of it. This to me is sort of the epitome of a summer bag. This is one that I will bring with me everywhere because it's small. It doesn't carry a lot, but because it is a backpack, it's just so easy. I mean, you literally chuck it over your shoulder. I really like the way this sort of makes an outfit look a bit more summery. And the color, I remember debating about the color for ages. I think I was gonna get a black one, but in the end went for the taupey gray shade, which I love. I mean, I'm so glad I got this one now. I think it's brighter and definitely more summery. So this I just love. I think the phase, are stunning. Um, the Faye you can kind of pinpoint by this big ring here at the front. It's got a little clip and a buckle but that doesn't actually do anything. You just lift it up and it's a popper and it's reasonably spacious actually. Back bags are great. I think you really can fit a lot in. You can make it bigger or smaller by pulling up these zips here. I usually leave the zip open because I, I just like the way it looks like that. A little bit more deconstructed and it does have a top handle too so you can carry it like this it's even long enough to do under the arm which i really like um there's just quite a few different ways to wear this and i think that makes it very versatile as well really adore this one still love the chloe vibe and uh yes if i had been going out in summer this year if i've been making the most of it this would have been coming with me unfortunately and the same goes for most of these bags. I haven't worn my bags properly in so long. I've been carrying a tote bag, if anything, when I go out because I'm pretty much going shopping for food or walking the dog. <laughs> sad times, sad times for handbags. Okay, next let's talk about another Chloe. This is in the same shade, actually, and it is the Chloe Mini Pixie. It's the small Pixie, okay, it's not the smallest one. I do find bag sizing to be quite confusing. Sometimes, the smallest bag isn't called the smallest and then you maybe have like a nano or a mini so i'm trying to keep um information flowing in this but um this one i still love again the combination of chloe's sort of like leather suede and gold hardware is so appealing to me this is in the gray as well i wouldn't call it an actual true gray it's definitely more warm toned it's more of a taupe um but it is called gray officially so this one looks also a a cross body bag it has a long thin strap again which we love to see i love this bag so much i think the round shape is really interesting and different to anything else i really have i like the way it sits there i like the size of it again this one comes bigger but i think the the smaller size is just cute and it sort of works better with the, the detailing also a great bag um, to remove the handle from the handle does come off or the big strap and use as a little clutch so cute i love this like metal detail um, I think this is very similar to the Chloe Nile bag, which has more of a round bracelet type handle. Both of those I think are now extinct. Um, I don't think they make these anymore. The backpack I'm sure is still in production, but I don't think the Pixies or the Niles are. So I'm really glad I have this. I think it's become quite an archive, my handbag collection, because I tend to really like things that are no longer around. Of the Chloe bags that I do own, maybe this is potentially the one that I wear the least. Um, and we could say that it's also quite similar to the Faye. It's not the biggest, almost practical, but you know, it'll fit your essentials. It'll fit your keys, phone, purse, wallet, things like that, hand sanitizer, mask. But I still love it. This is the point where I need to sort of 
start talking to myself and make sure I'm not just keeping things because they're pretty. <laughs> okay, let's talk about another fun one. This is uh, probably one of my most used handbags, again, in summer. Um, and pretty much all year round actually. I, I wear this all the time. This is from a brand I love called Ali Nina and it's the woven bucket bag. So this sort of woven thick rope style is very much their brand and what they do. You see a lot of this in various different shapes and sizes and colours. They're a very kind of neutral toned earthy sort of uh, colour brand which I love of course. And this is the plain canvas um, ivory shade. This is one of my most inexpensive designer bags. Obviously, we'd expect that because it is just made of rope and canvas. Wouldn't want to be paying any more than that. Um, so it's under the £200 mark, which is still definitely an investment and still something to really think about. But I think a great introductory price if you're starting to think about building your collection. And um, like I said, I just wear this one so much. You can pull the straps to make them a little bit longer if you want like that really is the perfect evening and day bag. It kind of just works with any outfit. It's a little bit of a miracle bag, this one. And surprisingly also very, very spacious. <laughs> this is the kind of bag that you could take to dinner and take to the pool too. You know, you just pop it on your wrist and it sort of works for anything. So I, I don't think I would want to part with that purely because I use it so much as well. It's just such a simple, easy design, but one that I find myself reaching for all the time. So those are all what I would call my small handbags. Um, let's talk about more medium sized ones now. And these are the ones I tend to find are mostly my everyday bags. These are the ones that I grab more often than not if I'm just popping out because they're big enough to fit things like a book, my phone, maybe an umbrella at push. So really functional everyday bags, which aren't huge and you know, kind of like the kitchen sink type handbags. So we're gonna start off with this one here, which is my most recent bag purchase. You will have seen this in a few videos back. I bought this this month. It is actually the only, the first and only bag I have bought in 2020. Again, because I haven't really needed to. <laughs> I saw this though and I thought, this is truly the perfect summer bag. It's functional, it's beautiful, and it's about time I started going out and wearing my bags more, so. This is from Loewe. Love Loewe so much. I think my number one dream bag on my wish list is the Loewe puzzle bag in a very similar color to this. I love that bag. It is just extortionately expensive <laughs> and uh, I've never been able to pull the trigger on it. So. These are much more affordable. Obviously, uh, this is a rattan bag, straw basket bag, whatever you want to call it. Um, this one has a very sort of close knit and it's lined too. So it's not just a basket bag that doesn't have anything to close it with. It's a little bit more developed than that. Good size, good roominess in there, nice zip. Um, it's lined with canvas too. And um, it's the pochette basket. So this one has a long strap, which I don't think is removable. It's not. I'm also not sure it's even adjustable looking at it now. Um, for me, this is the right height and I really love the way this one looks. The color palette is just a bit of me. While this may not have been the most um, expensive bag I have in my collection, I still think it is relatively pricey for a bag that is made of straw, essentially. I think the Weve are just a higher price point brand, so that's something to consider. But it is really well made. It's beautifully constructed um, and it does have extra sort of leather touches to it so it's not just a simple basket bag. Um, to me this is the perfect summer bag. This is probably all I will be wearing from now on as long as summer holds out. I would definitely take this on holiday if a holiday were to be anywhere in my foreseeable future which this is not. But I think just a great out and about everyday bag. I haven't actually used this yet so I feel like I can't give my full opinion on it, but um, so far everything about it has impressed me and, you know, I love it. I love it very much. I feel like because it is a more recent bag, it's very much reflective of my style. So next we have a bag which I think was probably my most worn of the last year or last six months. I got this in, when did I buy this? In December 2019, so it has been, you know, over six or seven months since then and when I was wearing bags regularly. Pretty much this is all I, I grab for and reach for. So this is from Sophie Hulme and it is the Bolt bag. It's a really interesting um, shape and concept, this bag. So it's kind of a little bit triangular here. It's wider at the bottom, 
but square from front or rectangular. It has a top handle and then a strap, but the strap is very cool. It has these really large holes in them because where this bag gets its name from is these little gold pieces of hardware here, which open and close are a little bit tricky, but they open and close like this, uh, essentially kind of like a bolt and then snap together. So this bag is really adjustable and really um, customizable. Unfortunately, um, Sophie Hulm, who are a brilliant British brand, uh, no longer really exist in the capacity that they used to. Um, Sophie Hulm has had some health issues, I think, very recently and decided to you know, put her brand on pause indefinitely for now. So the stock that is available, and I do think there is still stock available, um, is kind of what we're getting until who knows. Really, really sad actually, because I, again, I think they're a brilliant brand and this bag is so beautiful. I feel like more so now I'm just into very well-designed, um, thought out, simple handbags. So nothing with branding. I do have a quite a few bags with branding on, which you'll see in a second. Um, but to me now, this just kind of very minimal chic design is more what I want to reach for. This bag, for what it is and the, the way it's made, was really inexpensive. It was under £500, which I think for a, a designer handbag is a great price. So it is one I really will treasure for a long time and I'd like to think this will stand the test of time because it is such a simple and easy to wear bag. Um, this one is in the small. I think there's quite a few other sizes. There's a mini, which is smaller, and then I think the medium, which is larger. To me, this is a great size, again. Book, bone, both of those larger bits will fit in here. So that probably is one of my favorites. Really have a lot of love for the Sophie Hume bolt bag. I'm gonna transition straight into what I think is also my second <laughs> favorite and more recent purchase as well. This is from, um, October 2019, so again, less than a year. I feel like this is very much reflective of what I am wearing currently and what I want to wear. Um, everything about the way this bag is designed is just so pleasing to me. So this is the Acne Musubu bag. As you would expect from a brand like Acne, this is just pure, beautiful, Scandi design. Every angle of this is just perfection, truly. So. Um, this is a bag with a top handle as well as an crossbody strap. This is what I was saying about thick straps. They just please me so greatly having this really big, thick statement um, when you're wearing it crossbody. And it is really easy to wear crossbody. It's adjustable too. So you can have it quite high up, which I, I really like the look of. It's not too chunky for that, even though it's a relatively chunky bag. Or you can have it quite long. I really like to carry it around just by the top handle. Actually, I think it works so well that way. Um, on your arm or just, you know, walking around and the strap hanging across there like it does. I like that a lot. These little ties at the side here also, I think are beautiful. And it, it just is one of my bags, one of very, very few that really, truly holds its shape so well. This looks exactly the same as it did the day I got it and I have used and to use this poor sweet bag. The leather is very soft, so it's not one I think that would take well to um, scratching or anything too abrasive but um, saying that on the side that I wear it on so the side in contact with my body and you know zippers and buttons and things like that it's perfect there is not a mark on it um, it's another one that's super minimal so it just has the acne logo here embossed really unobtrusive and you wouldn't even notice it unless you look quite hard that is just what I love and want to see in all my um, designer pieces now. I just really like that minimal statement look, um, but something that is worth the investment because it is made really, really well. This one is the small, I think. There is a smaller one, which is very tiny and cute. Um, and there is also a larger one. I'm sure there's a larger one. Um, this to me is the perfect size. I don't think I want to go smaller. I don't think it would quite have the same look or hold obviously as much um, and the bigger one could be cool but I think it would be too big for an everyday bag because there's kind of quite a lot going on with it. Um, this one was 850 when I bought it last year. I'm sure it's gone up since then, um, maybe just a little bit, which you do tend to find bag prices inflating when they are still available. But for a bag that is under the £1,000 mark, I think it is so worth it. Um, of all my bags, this is kind of a question I'm trying to ask myself. If I had to grab one, 
if all my bags were lost in a fire, touch wood, that's never going to happen. Which would I grab? I feel like it probably would be this one. Um, maybe that will change once we <laughs> move on to different ones. Actually, also, one more thing. This is in the colour brown. This comes in quite a few colourways. There's a white, a black, but there are two brown shades. I have brown, but there is also tan, and they look very similar, and it's kind of hard to distinguish between them, depending on the website's imagery. The brown, to me, is so much more chic uh, and cool. It's just a lighter toned, less orangey brown, whereas this, the tan is quite a bit darker um, and a little bit more warmer toned. So the brown for me is, is much, much cooler. I think that's something that's a little bit difficult to distinguish between. Let's talk about this one next. This is a fun bag. A few of these I did manage to get a discount on just purely by waiting for one to pop up um, or managed to find them on sale. I think if there is a bag that you're truly lusting after and it's been you know the designated time that you've waited to see if you still like it and, and want to invest in it um it's great to kind of wait around for seasonal sales and see if there's some type of offer on them that is what i did with this one here so this is the simon miller bonsai bag um it's the bonsai 20 so not the smallest these come again and super cute mini um and also a large one so it's the medium size and i managed to get something like 15 20 percent off on a net of water sale amazing um it's such a cool bag so it's just a bucket it's a very round shaped bucket bag but it has these two amazing handles at the top which are tortoise shell this bag is really cool um they're almost like little bracelets so i mean to me again this is such a perfect summer summer holiday bag throw your sunglasses in here a book um and you've got like a perfect beach bag there's not really many ways to wear it there's no cross body strap with this and no way to attach one so you are pretty much just left with the option of carrying it by the handles or you know just chucking it on your arm like that to some that is a pain i know there are definitely situations where i need to have a bag that allows me to go hands-free or i get incredibly frustrated but I think in summer it kind of works you know walking around with this and just a very floaty dress and a pair of sandals I, I just enjoy it and I kind of like holding it this is in the shade ivory um when did I get this one I got this in March 2019 so a couple of years ago now always gets pulled out again in summer not so much a winter bag again I feel like winter autumn bags I, I want them to be slightly chunkier slightly darker and also have that strap availability um but for a summer bag so great the leather is so soft it's so like buttery and beautiful really really i love this bag and it's got a couple of scuffs on it one or two marks but nothing i don't think would just polish off with a little eraser cloth i do keep uh, a scarf in here or just something to help preserve its shape um, because it can sort of like implode onto itself if it's just left um, but when it's full and when you're carrying it around, it's absolutely fine. I just think it's good to store something inside it just to make sure it's nice and, and round still. So I love that one. So speaking of autumn bags, these next two, I feel like I look at most years and I think I'm never going to wear that again. And as soon as autumn and winter rolls around, they are literally all I'm reaching for. I think it's very much to do with my color palette of my wardrobe changing and wearing a lot of darker shades. Um, during like the last half of the year. And these just always seem to work so well. So first of all is another Chloe. This is the Chloe Tess. Um, I think you could probably tell it was a Chloe bag just by looking at it. It has all the staples, these big chunky gold rings on the hardware, lots of detail going on with the straps, an extra top handle. I like that there's a lot of consistency between the designs um, when it comes to Chloe, and that's one of the things I love about the brand. This is kind of the most un-Chloe bag that I have of all the Chloe bags, though, because it's black. I feel like it really changes the vibe of them if you have them in black. And uh, when I purchased this, I was really debating what shade to get, and pretty much every single test, no matter what colour or style, is so beautiful. There's lighter coloured ones, there's a taupe one, which is gorgeous. Um, they also do a lot of different patterns and details, which is very much Chloe, where, you know, the, the top flap will be a different colour and pattern to the bottom and the strap. But I decided to just go for a simple black for this one. I actually purchased this in November 2018. So I feel like I purchased it at the time where I wanted to wear it and 
that is why it kind of ended up being in this darker shade. But I think that makes it very classic. The gold and the black are quite a stark contrast, so sometimes it can feel a little bit more um, dressy to wear this almost. It makes more of a statement because it has that contrast and that gold hardware, but I still find myself wearing it so much. I pretty much always wear this as an crossbody bag. It has a super chunky, really cool detailed strap. So this is how I will normally wear it. Sometimes though, the top handle is great. It's another really kind of long one, so you can just chuck it underneath your arm like that. I got this in the small, so this is the small size. I think this is a great size. Again, it's just a perfect sort of mid size bag, even though it's the small. I think it does come smaller and it also comes larger. The larger one to me, it's a little bit off proportion. It looks too sadly almost. Whereas I think the medium is just perfectly proportioned. Size wise inside, it's really quite deceiving this one. You definitely get a lot in there. It has an extra little flap here at the top. There are a few scratches on this actually. Um, this is probably my one of my more used bags. I do think with the test, you have to be careful to make sure this little popper detail is shut. Otherwise this can sort of move around a bit. Um, also, I think this is maybe my nails where I've gone to open it and not quite done it properly. But I mean, you can't see it. It's very minimal wear. It's only really something you would notice if you were looking really, really up close. Um, so for me, this bag has been wonderful. And in the two years that I've had it, I've worn it so much. Um, I don't think I'd reach for it at the moment, which again is where I get really conflicted about bags, particularly this colour. But I'm so sure that when autumn rolls around again, I will be reaching for that one. This next bag is very similar. It does make me think, and I've had this little internal dilemma before, whether or not I actually need both of these, <laughs> because they really do have very similar characteristics. So this is the Gucci Marmont. It is in the size small, um, black with gold hardware. And I got this one in January, 2018. This is actually the mid size, even though it's the small. There is a much smaller one and then a much larger one. I feel like this has a very Chanel classic flap vibe to it, although in Gucci's own funky way. It does open here. It's got like a little, not a popper, but a little clasp that you push up. And um, again, it's a really roomy, sizable one. There's a lot of detail on this. It's kind of like slightly ribbed there. And obviously what makes it the Gucci Marmot is this zigzaggy pattern on the flap and then the big GG logo there. This currently is probably my most branded bag. This is the one that's sort of most screams, this is a designer handbag. Um, at the back, it does have a very cute little heart, which I like a lot. But again, I think it's because it's the gold on black and then this very pronounced GG logo. That, I don't know, there's something that, that makes me not want to reach for it so much because it is a little bit more statement and in your face. Saying that, when I do wear this, I love it. And I think it may be down to the shape and the style of it. I love that it has um, the across body bag, which you can pull up. I definitely wear it more like this, just under my shoulder than I would do crossbody. I think that's because it's chain. The chain is broken up with a little leather strap at the top here. So it's not quite as, you know, just one chain going around. And I like that it has the detail on the top there. I just really love the flap too. Everything about the way this opens and is, is very usable um, is great. I do notice sometimes that things fall out of it. So although the flap closes, there's this a little hole each side and if you have something small in it like loose change or mascara or lip gloss it might fall out and I, I'm sure I've lost things before and things I've noticed have fallen out. If I was thinking about this in the context of would I grab this if I could only save one thing I don't think I would so maybe that says something but I think I need to think on that one and then from one statement back to another um, this one is very I'd say trend led and it's the Couples, it's from the Couples, it's the Emily bag. This is pretty much the only patterned printed bag I have. It's a python design. It's a very neutral python design, which is the reason that I chose it. But still it's quite, it's quite a lot. This bag is so functional though, I really love wearing it. It's got a very thick strap and actually this strap on its own is very cool. I like the way that it looks. Kind of goes thicker at the top and thinner towards the bottom has a lot of kind of gold hardware details this twists and then you open it and it's very roomy and very spacious inside Ooh, 
a bit of uh, pick and mix in there. It's a really well structured bag, so it really does hold its shape. It will always be like this. It's not really forgiving in terms of um, flexibility. So it's quite a solid, chunky one. So I um, purchased this in October 2018. It is not a massively expensive one. I got this for under 400 at the time. I'm not quite sure on the pricing now, but I'm imagining it's very similar to that. When I first got this, I definitely went through a spell of wearing it so much. And to be very sentimental, this bag actually reminds me a lot of Joe. I bought it pretty much around the time I met him. And I used to wear it out on our dates and various things like that. This um, style of bag, so Python in particular, was very on trend around about that time and it definitely worked in with the wardrobe that I was wearing then really well. But I don't know if it was the most wise purchase in terms of longevity. I think a Python, I think, will always come back around again. Um, Python and all print in general, as with Leopard, it, it never really goes away um, and it will always be relevant. But for now, I'm not sure if if that is the case. I think it would definitely make me very sad to part with this, but I don't know if it is the most relevant bag in my collection or my wardrobe right now. Okay, so now we have come to the more mid to large and larger sized bags. And this is the final section of this video. This is where we come to, I think, another definitely top four, top five handbag. Um, and this is the JW Anderson Pierce bag. At the time I got this, which was in, let's see, June 2018, I felt this was very much a trend bag. This style, um, and it's called the Pierce because it basically has these two little holes and then what looks like a piercing going through them. Um, it was a very trend leg bag at the time. Maybe it wasn't the, the best um, in terms of an investment, but actually, to me, and I think specifically more towards me because I just love it so much, it really has worked throughout the years that I've had it. It's worked with various different wardrobe and style transitions and I still adore it. It's it's just still one of my favorites. I think I got this on sale actually because it was going out of stock. I don't think it is very easy to find these anymore. Um, there's a couple that pop up every so now and then on Bestier. But in terms of buying one brand new, I don't think it's actually possible. It kind of follows a very similar pattern to the next couple of bags I'm going to show you. But it's basically a slightly, not quite rectangular, front flap bag. This one is super skinny when it has nothing in it. It really, there's just, it, it feels like there's not a lot to it. But you can feel this up. When there is stuff in it, it expands. Um, I don't think it looks the best when it's completely full because it just gets a little bit chunky and clunky. Uh, but when there's just, you know, a good amount of stuff in here, I think it's beautiful. Um, so it's kind of like a slightly concertinaed, concertinaed bag. The strap, there's a two strap system here. It has a thick top handle, which has this uh, little detailing here. This is the adjustable portion of the strap where you can change it. But I, I do really like the way it looks with those little gold pieces of hardware there. Um, and then that clips on or off. Both of these come off, so the top handle and the strap can both be removed and you can just use it as a clutch. I really like the thick strap, but also it has no crossbody. This is probably one of the shorter crossbody bags I have. I've got it on the longest setting and it does wear really high up on me. I like that about this though and it's the reason I don't like to fill it too much because if it's too chunky there and it sits really high up, I think it's a bit of an unflattering shape. But um, wearing it that high up just really sort of suits it. The color as well is probably what's one of my favorite things about it. These Pierce bags came in so many different shades. There were some that had different flaps to bodies, some that had different colored handles. Um, this color is actually just called brown. <laughs> Nothing special about it, it is just brown. But they had um, lighter colors, they had tans. If I hold this up next to the Acne Masubi bag, you can see that it's definitely more of a red toned tan bag. I think that works great with the gold hardware. This is another one that has that sort of like front facing kind of statement gold hardware there, but I think it's done really well. I also like the detailing here on the little clasps too. Um, so as it is just unobtainable to find, I'm sure I could probably sell this for something reasonable, but um, I, I wouldn't want to part with it. It's held up so well. There's no marquee on this and it is quite a soft leather. Just one of my favorites and maybe one of the older yet still very relevant to me 
style handbag so that was a definitely a good investment these next two are kind of similar to the jw anderson are one of my or a couple of my older bags um let's talk about this one here which is the very first the very first kind of high price point designer bag purchase that i made um i think i got the salar on camera bag and then a little while later went for something that was actually over the thousand pound mark which is this bag here again this one was very very trend led and as something that was my first big investment piece i probably should not have bought this but to this day i adore it it is truly one of my favorite bags <laughs> top five for sure top three for sure does anybody want to count how many times i actually say favorite bags in this video we'll have a little running total going in the comments clearly 2016 me knew that uh alex in the new decade would be very into the neutrals because it fits it works so well still this is the uh, gucci dionysus so it's the gucci dionysus in the medium and it is the gg supreme print so it's um just the gucci logo print the original kind of gucci print uh, this one does have suede as well. There's some suede detailing on the back. There's a little pocket here. And then if I open up this clasp, it is also lined with suede too. Linings can be quite tricky. Sometimes they fare much better than the rest of the bag because they're sort of protected inside. And sometimes they can get really damaged because obviously you're taking things in and out of here and it's coming into contact with a lot more. This one has actually done so well i know quite a few people that have had a suede dionysus or a fully suede one and it's it's not been good i think more so that type of wear happens on the outside um and the one place that i do notice it is on this back flap here you can see where it's just a little bit worn because this is what's kind of coming into contact most with my clothes and my body and everything the rest of it though truly does look the same as the day i got it it's very kind of hard wearing on here. Um, it's like a rough texture. You can pretty much scratch this. You can spill things on it. Nothing happens. Um, this is the second and only bag, um, just like the mini Dionysus that has silver hardware. Actually, no, it's the third. <laughs> there is one more. Uh, I'm obviously very much a gold metal gold hardware girl. But I still love this. It's not the brightest silver, it's a little bit more gunmetal. It just still works for me and I still really enjoy it. I think because it sort of fits in with the colour of the bag, um, it all just blends together. If this had gold hardware, I don't think I'd like it as much. I think it would be a bit too, too much, too over the top. Um, so the handle on this is great. You can either wear it quite short, which is the way I prefer to wear it, just under my arm, or it does pull longer so you can wear this as an across body i think actually this is my shortest across body i don't think i've ever been able to get away with it but i think that might be down to my boobs just getting in the way so although one of my oldest bags um such a great investment to me because i, I don't think i'll ever not like this i think there's something very classic about um a logo print like this there are a lot of vintage gucci bags in this same logo print that you see on bestia now that are still really wearable uh, it truly just stand the test of time so i think i actually was onto something when i decided to make this my first handbag purchase so speaking of when i actually bought this um so it's been nearly nearly five years just under five years four and a half and since i bought this it has gone up they still sell it so this is still available which um really can't be said for most of my bags so especially for one of the oldest i think that says a lot but it has gone up 500 pounds since I uh, purchased it when it when I bought it it was just over a thousand so still a, a lot um, but it has gone up so much since then and I think even the price has started to increase around the time I bought it I was lucky and I got it before that happened but I think it gained vast popularity um, a couple of years ago and because of that the price has been inflated quite a bit and then the final bag I have in this sort of very similar front flap style the size and shape of this is almost identical to the JW Anderson. This one's slightly smaller, this one's slightly bigger. Is the Chloe Faye. This is the original Chloe Faye before the various different versions of it 
Um, if I compare it again to the handbag or to the backpack, you can see the inspiration here, that same little circular loop at the front and then this chain hanging off of it. Um, this bag is, I think, probably one of the most beautiful ones I own. Mainly down to the colour. Clothes have come in so many different colours and patterns and I know I wanted one for a very long time before I purchased this, I just didn't know which shade, which material to go for. For a long time I was thinking about getting the black one, which is black leather and then the flap is black suede. And in the end I settled on this one. I bought this on my 25th birthday as a present to myself and it is in the shade Biscotti Beige. Um, over the years I've collected a few more colourful bags. Um, like I said at the beginning, my bags are very functional to me. If I don't use them, I don't feel like there's any point having them. So the more sort of bright, colourful, in-your-face ones I've parted ways with, I've sold and I've given to people because they just don't really fit in and I, I don't really find myself wearing them anymore. So this is kind of the last one left. Um, I mean, it's not the brightest of colours. It's, it's pink at the end of the day. Sometimes, especially on camera, it looks a bit more brown, but it is a very light shade of pink. But one that I really do still love. I think if I'd gone for anything kind of cool tone pink, it might not have worked. It's not really a girly pink, it's definitely more of a taupey, neutral pink. It's very similar actually to the colour of my walls in my office. <laughs> Pretty much identical actually, so clearly something about the colour appeals to me. I think it goes great with the gold hardware. Um, Faze come with either gold or silver hardware. Um, so this one, I think the warmth of the gold works really well with the colour of it. And this is a very similar style actually to the JW Anderson in that it pops open. It has these three basic compartments inside and it does sort of concertina out at the bottom. Again, you can't really fill this one up too much without it looking a bit chunky. I used to be able to fit my laptop in this. So when Apple still did the 13 inch MacBook, may she rest in peace, my absolute favorite thing Apple have ever done. And then they just went and discontinued it. Don't want to talk about it, it still hurts. I used to be able to fit this in. So this to me was like the perfect city bag. I could take this into London with my MacBook, a book, phone, purse uh, and that was all I needed, maybe like vlogging camera. Um, and for a bag that looks very thin and very sort of nothing much, it did fit a lot in. I haven't worn this bag for a while and I think it might have something to do with it not being um, as easy to find. I was keeping this one in its dust bag and on show because I really didn't want to damage it. It's quite a special bag to me because I bought it at a certain point in my life. Um, and I did notice a few years ago that I had these two little dents in it. They might not be very easy to see on camera but there's two little dents at the top which I have tried to push out I don't know what happened I must have rested something on it and that really kind of jarred me and upset me so um I've kept special special care with this one um in terms of the inside the suede looks great there are no marks on this at all I don't think there's maybe one or two at the bottom um, it's a very light suede inside here, so actually it's very easy to mark. I'm surprised it doesn't look worse, to be honest. This one doesn't actually have a top handle, it just has the one single strap. It's extendable and I have it quite short at the moment because I do tend to wear it like this. Um, but again, you can make it crossbody. I think it's actually pretty good length for me crossbody at the moment, even with it being on a shorter length. Um, and it does have that really skinny, thin strap which I love. I think actually the gold hardware and the detail on this are a little bit less intrusive than on some of my bags, although it has these little clips here at the side and obviously the front portion. Still, I feel like it's very subtle. I think that's because the colour of the bag works really well with it. I could sit and talk about this one for a really long time. I could sit and just look at it for a really long time, but I will move on. So we're getting a lot bigger now. This next bag is a true workhorse for me. I'm surprised it looks as good as it does because I have used this so much. Um, this is a Mulberry Bayswater zipped. Um, it has this really cool detail on the front here which is like a little twisty clasp and you can have it open like that. I think this is a relatively new style in terms of Mulberry and although they're a heritage brand um, that have been around for so long, I think this style is more updated for the Bayswater. I feel like it they kind of went for a little bit of a Hermes Kelly vibe with that front clasp. I got this in September 2017, which I think is after Mulberry had a price decrease. Um, so this one came in at under a thousand pounds, which I think is probably 
I'd say one of my best value for money handbags. I truly think for something this good quality from a brand like Mulberry and the size that it is, that was really great. Um, so it has obviously the top handle, you can carry it around like that. But what I loved about it is the strap that comes with it. This is detachable and really easy to use actually. It's not one that you have to sit and work at and it takes ages to get on and off. Um, so when you zip it up, you can just use the long strap, you can do crossbody. I kind of like to just have it on my shoulder. When I have this, I usually have a lot of stuff in it. I usually have a camera, laptop, um, various heavy things. So um, just wearing it on my shoulder like that makes it quite easy to carry around. Because of the zip, I feel really safe with this. Um, and it just makes everything really portable. It's also got quite a formal feel to it. And I think that's probably the reason that I tend to take this bag to meetings or events or something where I just want to feel a little bit more businessy, I guess. <laughs> Saying that though, this also is one of my most worn bags, particularly in autumn, if I want something on the larger size. If I'm gonna be out for longer, if I need to carry a lot of stuff, um, and I feel like this also goes so well when I'm wearing like a big coat. Something about a big, long line, wool coat, this bag. Mm. Yes, despite this being used so much, it is still in perfect condition. The lining is fantastic. I think Mulberry are a truly brilliant British brand. Um, I've had a few bags from Mulberry before, which are no longer with us, but that I think will always be my favorite. So a few years later after that, so that one I got in 2017, and then last year in June of 2019, I kind of upgraded my workhorse bag to this. This is another instance of me buying a bag which no longer exists in the world anymore. Um, a lot of you will probably recognize this one as the Celine Trifold. So I bought this again around the time of my birthday and I actually got it from Bista Village. So it was a little bit discounted from the original price. Although I don't think I found out or could find out what that was because it wasn't in stores and um, online anymore. But I got this for under a thousand pounds. It was around about the 900 mark, which for a Celine bag, I was pretty happy with. The detailing on this is so minimal. Again, so the logo is just stamped in very small print um, at the bottom there. So this is the other bag and the final, definitely final bag that has silver hardware. Although I don't really think you'd be able to tell because it's so minimal. The Celine logo is in silver and then there is one zip across the top. Um, so as it is named the trifold, there are three compartments to this. It is a seriously spacious bag. The main compartment in the center is the biggest, but then these outside ones are great too. So I can fit full size, big, proper laptop in here. I can fit a large DSLR camera, um, books, many books, pair of shoes if I need to change into something more comfortable. It again, really, I did buy this with the intention of it being a bag that I carried my life around in, but still one that you know, worked and was stylish, something that wasn't kind of out of place if I was dressed up. Basically a kind of work bag, and I think this is a fantastic work bag. The one thing that, that makes it slightly harder to carry than the Mulberry one is that it doesn't have an across body strap. It just comes with these two top handles. They're a lot longer though, so with the Mulberry one I, I wouldn't be able to fit that over my arm, but with this I can. When there's more in it, obviously it gets bulkier and harder to do that, but I quite like just carrying this around as it is. I think you can see the difference in how my style kind of evolved over the years from this being the type of large black bag I was into and then this um, becoming just a lot more me. It's very minimal in its design, but it's also just really well designed. I think no matter the brand, no matter the price, everybody truly needs a large black work bag in their wardrobe. It's just one of those pieces that's so versatile um, it kind of makes me think that I don't need the both of these anymore and it would make me So very sad to part with this. I'm looking at it now Even with the outfit that I'm wearing and I still love it um, And again, I think it's something maybe is better decided around the time I will be wearing it more so in autumn But I think if I needed to pick between the two now, it would always come down to this one Which kind of makes me think the Mulberry one may no longer serve a purpose in my wardrobe Okay, so we have Two bags left. These are, I say kind of a neck size up, these are large bags. These are big, overnight, carry-all type bags. Um, God, this video has gone on for a long time, hasn't it? How long did you think I could actually ramble about bags? Let's talk about this one first. 
So this is um, another bag from Loewe. It's a basket bag um, and my only sort of proper designer basket bag. This one I didn't purchase myself. I was actually sent this very kindly by Sky, not by Loewe, <laughs> um, but by Sky for a launch of one of their new TV shows. So I am just so very grateful to have this in my collection because leading up to the time when I got it, I had been thinking about buying it for so long and up until it unexpectedly arrived in my life, I was literally holding my finger over the trigger. Um, in terms of a basket bag, which again is made of straw, <laughs> It is extortionately priced. You can find so many of these. I feel like the base of all these handbags are the same. They're probably made in the same place. They're probably made with the same materials. Obviously, what makes this different is the uh, leather straps that it has and the Loewe logo, which I understand adds some price to it, as well as the Loewe brand name doing that. So although this actually would be one of the least expensive bags here in my collection, I still think in terms of what it actually is, it's a lot. I think it's very different to talk about a bag that you didn't pay for yourself um, in terms of affordability and would I buy it again and was it worth the price because you, you didn't initially part with that price. What I think of that this bag though is the fact that I was about to buy it for myself. So I feel like it is money that I would have spent for sure. So it's a large bag. This is like the ultimate shopper Sunday farmer's market, beach bag, and I, I've used it so much. I mean, straw bags are something that I, I like and use a lot all the time. Love a straw bag so much. Um, so really, I, I have used this one many, many times. I feel like although it is a more expensive straw basket bag, the cost per wear has really gone down because, you know, I've gotten so much use out of it. And it's just super chic as well. Loewe, to me, are just a brand that are very cool. I realise it probably completely donates the coolness of it by me saying that. Um, but it's nice. I like the detailing of the bag handles which you can switch over. I'm not sure I would wear it like that when I got it. The handles actually went from this side to that side which are a little bit strange and hard to carry but I put them back in this place and I think they look a little better like that. I like to wear this under my arm actually. You can kind of squish it down um, and it works like that. There's no closure on this so what I normally do is use the dust bag that the bag came in um, and that has like a little pull tie so I just pop that inside or any type of bag that closes like that and I feel like my valuables and things are a little bit safer that way but obviously it's always something to consider with a bag that is just wide open. I got this last summer I believe and it is in the it is in the medium. This is probably one of the more confusing sizings um, in terms of the bags I have because again the photography on various different websites it makes it very difficult to see what size is what, but this is the medium. The small is a lot smaller and then there's also a large, which is much bigger um, and would probably fit in your entire life. I don't think I'd need anything bigger than that one because that is enough for me. Okay, so here we are at the final bag. And this is my one and only Dior bag. I'm not sure I'm a Dior girl. I obviously think the Dior saddle bags, vintage and otherwise, are beautiful. They're just so expensive. <laughs> I did try for a long time actually to find a Dior saddle bag online um, on Vestier secondhand and I think I left it too late because I remember seeing them so much on there and then they got popular when they re-released the saddle bag and they were all gone or just massively overpriced. So other than that I think Dior is a little bit too pretty and girly for me although I, I feel like they've gotten a lot more masculine um, and edgy over the past couple of years which I enjoy. This bag though is a vintage bag. I got this second hand on Vestier. Second hand might have even been third hand when it got to me. So this is my overnight bag basically. Uh, it's a carryall. It's actually the Dior cloth bowling bag and it is in that bowling bag style where it's quite long, has the stripes and the shorter handle. Um, I, I'm sure this is supposed to come with an across body. It didn't make it to me with that but you know as an overnight bag this tends to just either sit on top of my suitcase or just be carried from car to wherever um I, I wouldn't really carry this around every day so having these short straps doesn't really matter to me that much these large hold all carry all bags are a really great thing to find on Bessier actually so if you're looking for a Louis Vuitton one very similar or a Gucci in this like logo print um they all have very very similar shape design bags 
I think it's really worth looking secondhand because there are some that are brilliant quality. This one came to me perfect um, for a really affordable price and you're giving something a second life, which is always great. So this is just the very classic Dior cloth, canvas, logo print uh, with the black detail. I really like that it has black straps and it is a beast. It's <laughs> literally the biggest bag ever. I could fit everything I need in here. Before I got this, I was kind of like taking suitcases on overnight trips or long weekends and it was just too much. I could fit in here, you know, my skincare bag, my makeup bag, a couple of outfits, maybe a pair of shoes, laptop, electricals, things like that. So it's a really great size. It's not huge, but it is just enough. I don't know what the original pricing of this was, but I got it on Vestier for just under 500 pounds. Um, dual bags I think are more expensive, especially secondhand. I feel like they do get marked up because of the brand's popularity currently. For what it is, and it's, it's such a beautiful piece of almost like history, because I, I do think this bag is quite old. I was quite happy to pay that, and it's one of those bags, those luggage bags, that I know I'll just have forever, and you know, maybe my kids will end up using this, and my grandkids, <laughs> who knows. Um, it's one that I try and keep, um, I try and keep in good condition, I try and take care of, but at the same time, it's an overnight bag, so it's gonna be thrown in cars and boots and on trains and things like that. It's gonna um, be taken with me everywhere, so I'm not too precious about it. Despite that though, it's held up really well. It's canvas, so it is super durable. It also folds down super easily, so if you're wondering how I would store such a large bag, it literally flattens out like this, and I usually just pop that on a shelf somewhere. Did I say at the beginning of this video that it wasn't going to be a rambly one? That was a lie, wasn't it? I feel like I have talked for the longest time. Um, but there was definitely a lot of information to get through there, so I'm glad I managed to do that. So, 21 bags. Do I need to keep them all? I think, having spoken through those all, it's definitely really sort of shined a light on me or on the bags as to which ones that I use regularly, which ones I love, even if I haven't picked them up for a while, and which ones I probably could see myself parting with. I think definitely the number one goodbye is this Prada bag. I think I just have very similar, similar things to it, and I just don't really wear it as much as I should in it. And it should go to a place where it's loved and worn a lot. I think also maybe we could say the same for the Gucci mini Soho disco bag. I'm reluctant to part with this because it is so rare and I know that I won't be able to find it again. But um, I think now for me it's just a little bit too small. It's a little bit maybe too detailed with the tassel here. I still love the colour though so much, it's beautiful. I think we know that this Chloe bag is just beyond special so I, I, I couldn't say goodbye to that. As goes for the Gucci Dionysus, the original, still a favourite. I'm actually thinking that perhaps the Chloe Pixie, as amazing as it is, is a little bit too similar to the, the Faye, just purely because of the colours and the hardware, although this is such a fun and interesting shape. I feel like maybe that could be one I say goodbye to as well. And also this Couples bag. As reluctant as I am, to part with this because it has some really great memories attached to it. I know this will come back into style, but I'm not sure if my style will reflect that when it does. So that's a thinker for sure. Also, I'm having serious questions about the Mulberry Bays water. I feel like despite the fact that I use this so much, it's now something that perhaps gets pushed to second best now that I have the Celine Trifold. And this is still in such good condition too. I think anybody would be happy to have this as their work bag, if that's what they chose it to be for. Looking at these all together as well, I truly can see that my most worn bags are the Acne Masubi, such a great bag, and the Sophie Hulme Bolt bag, really functional, really wearable in my wardrobe right now, and just great. And although maybe I don't reach for it quite as much, the JW Anderson, and actually the Ali Nina bag, real firm favourites with a lot of wares racked up. My biggest question now, other than the Mulberry, is the Gucci Mom one. Is this too similar to the Chloe? What do we think? Or is the shape just that little bit more unique that it's worth hanging on to? Those are some questions that I have to ask myself. So guys, um, that is my handbag collection. 
when I decide what I'm going to part with, these probably will be ending up on my Depop. So if you follow me on there, um, have a look. That's where you'll find the final decision that was made. Maybe there'll be some surprises on there, who knows. Um, so I'll link that down below. My Depop is just at iCover at the end. There's still quite a few things in there actually from the wardrobe clear out. So if you're interested in that, go and have a little peek. I truly think this will have been the longest video I have ever uploaded. Um, so if anybody is still here, oh my God, guys, thank you. Thank you for sitting through that. I know I get so many comments about how my voice makes you fall asleep, which I'm not sure if is an insult or a compliment. Maybe it's just somewhere down the middle. Um, if you are one of those people that is thus affected by my voice, I'm sure you've napped by now or at least had a little snooze. Um, so yes, if you've watched all the way through, you're amazing and thank you so, so much. I truly don't think most of these bags, especially the ones or the one that was sent to me, would be part of my life if it wasn't for you guys. Here is where I get a little bit soppy during a handbag collection video. Doing this, doing YouTube, doing this um, career has truly impacted my life so much and so many of the things that I have and that I'm just so grateful for. I wouldn't have without all of you watching the support that you get, the amazing comments that you leave me, just the enthusiasm that so many of you have for this channel and for me as a person which still boggles my mind after nearly a decade of, of doing this. Um, it just means so much. I think having all of this sort of sat in front of me now, especially in the time that we're in where people truly are struggling so much and have so little, it, it's really making me think that I'm beyond grateful and I, I sit in such a position of privilege. So yeah, I feel like that was kind of, that's kind of a necessary thing to say at the end of this video. But um, at the end of the day, I feel like we can all have fun here talking about bags. It's frivolous and it's superficial, but you know, sometimes we need a little bit of that in our lives. Okay, <laughs> just got very emotional there, but let's move on. Thank you for watching. Um, that is it for me today and I will see you guys soon. Bye.